Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to another session of our um, Read and Reflect uh, reminders. And once again, for everyone that's been tuning in, may Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair for tuning in for uh, as long as you guys have been tuning in for. And hopefully you guys continue to tune in till the end of the month of Ramadan. And every every day at 2 p.m. inshallah, Hafid Nur and Hafid uh, Idris will be blessing us with their beautiful recitation. I mean, hearing the Quran being recited in a beautiful tone, in a melodious tone. I don't think there's any, anything more soothing than that. So 2 p.m. every day, inshallah, make sure you you continue to try to join, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa nasalli ala rasulhi al-kareem. Today, the Hufad completed the recitation, or began and completed the recitation of two surahs. One is Surah Al-Hijr, and one is Surah Al-Nahl. And obviously we don't have enough time to go into both, right? Rather, we hardly have enough time to go into one specific surah. Uh, so I will speak about the theme or a, a, a topic that I find that is present in both of these surahs. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about this specific ayah, or this specific theme in both surahs, and it connects the surahs together. Surah Al-Nahl was revealed post-Uhud. Post-Uhud, it was revealed um, to explain the Prophet Sallam that um, you, know, you should you should be at ease. That's the opinion of some people. Uh, but the dominant opinion, rather, is that it was a Madani, it was a Makki surah, and the last few verses were revealed after Uhud, and that, that is the opinion of Imam Qurtubi and other scholars and some say it's a madani surah but the dominant opinion that it's uh, a makki surah and some verses were revealed after uhud took place so what is the ayah what is the verse that um that is found in both surahs and the theme that is found in both surahs where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ this is ayah number 87 in Surah Al-Nahl, uh, in Surah Al-Hijr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Prophet of Allah, I know that because of what they say, it bothers you inside. Yadiqu sadruka. It bothers you, it hurts you. The names that they call you, and, 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 and the mockery that they, that, they, that, that, that they throw at you, and the taunts that they throw at you. We know that this, this is difficult for you, this is hard, this is challenging. Yadiqu sadruka. Raqayadhiqu means to tighten up, to be constrained, to, to, to be tight. That your chest becomes tight because of what they say. Well, Prophet of Allah, we know that happens. But remember that your way out of this and your way to look beyond this is to make sure that you continue praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Continue to praise Allah. Continue to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His praise. And be amongst those that prostrate out of gratitude that what got what what will get you over this difficulty and what will get you through this difficulty is not you looking at them and feeling bad about yourself, but rather understanding that what you have is because of Allah and continue praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will make and Allah will bring a solution for you at this difficult time of your life. And then he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa buddha rabbaka hatta ya'tiya yaqeen. And continue worshiping your Lord until you have reached the epitome of conviction and certainty. What does this mean? وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Refers to the idea of continue worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you leave this world. That regardless of what people say and how they taunt you and what they say to you, you don't stop doing what you're supposed to do. And this was a time in Mecca where everyone, the leaders of Mecca are taunting the Prophet ﷺ. Allah literally says to the Prophet that we know that it hurts inside. We know it bothers you. We know that you know, you're, 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 get, you're emotionally challenged by this. To an extent where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the Prophet that no, إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ تَنْزِيلَ الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمٍ Oh Prophet of Allah, don't worry. You are the greatest Prophet. You are the blessed Prophet. And you have been blessed with my, my wahi. So Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ in this ayah, in the end of Surah Al-Hijr, Allah is saying, hey, I know you're affected by it, right? Because we all get affected by things. But continue praising Allah. Continue praising Allah, continue worshipping Allah to the last moment. 
and the way to to protect yourself from their taunts, Allah says is, لا تمدنا عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواج منهم. Don't look at what they have. Don't give them much attention. Don't 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 look at their blessings in dunya and get affected by that. لا تمدنا عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواج. Don't look at that. Rather, praise Allah and continue praying to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to the last moment. And now the last ayah, right? The last ayah of Surah An-Nahl. It's a very similar ayah where Allah says, وَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَحْزَنَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا تَكُوا فِي ضَيْقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ And this ayah was actually revealed after Uhud, where Hamza and so many other sahabas became shaheed. And the Prophet was, he was affected by this. Um, and Aisha once asked the Prophet that what was the most difficult day of your life? And the Prophet responded by saying, in Mecca it was Uhud, and in Medina it was... So in Mecca, it was the, the, the day of Ta'if. And in Medina, it was the battle of Uhud, where I lost my blessed uncle, Hamza radiallahu an, and the rest of the companions. This was a very difficult day for the Prophet. Allah says, Be patient. Be patient. It is better for you. And Allah says to the Prophet that continue having patience. 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 And the people that had become shaheed, they're moving on to better, better places. وَلَا تَكُوا فِي ضَيْقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ And don't have, don't, 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 don't be tight chest. Don't have a tight chest. Uh, don't be, don't allow your chest to constrain you and to bring you down because of all their plots and plans that they had against you. Rather continue making an effort. And how do you continue making an effort? In اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ Continue working with the group of people that you already have. You lost 70, but you have so many. Work with them and continue worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this and don't stop what you're supposed to do. And the last surah in Surah Al Hijr, Allah said, Don't look at what they have and stay patient and don't have a tight chest and constrain your chest. And in this surah, Allah says the same thing, but He tells him what to do to them. Rather than looking at what they have, Allah says, Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'ilat al hasana that go ahead, continue to call them towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom in the right demeanor, the right process, the right words. Bil hikmati means make, saying the right thing at the right time. And that has an effect. Saying the right thing at the wrong time can have the opposite effect. Wal mu'ilat al hasana is saying it in the right way. Sometimes saying is saying something which is right in a demeaning way, in a in, in, in a derogative tone, in a in a in, in a tone that um, can make the other person feel humiliated and feel inferior. It's better if you didn't say that, right? Sometimes we want to correct someone, but the way we correct them is in itself requires a correction, because we're saying it in a manner that uh, belittles that person. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that no, wal ma'idat al hasana, even though. You're, this is the greatest mistake. This is the worst mistake that one can commit to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you correct them, do it in a nice manner. Do it in a manner which is which is respectful, which is honorable to them. So they don't feel humiliated in any way possible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the end of the surah, don't worry, continue having patience and don't allow your chest to be constrained on you and bring you down. Rather, be in the, in the company of your sahabas Right and continue worshiping me until you pass away, and that's your that's your responsibility. Your responsibility is to be patient until the moment that you leave this world and you don't sway away from your ibadah. And I mentioned this a few sessions ago as well that consistency and istiqama by definition is that when circumstances and when situations do not dictate how our relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is, our relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not affected in regards to the amal. Because of the circumstances around us, yes, iman can go up and down. Iman can go up and down. Iman can be, get affected if someone belittles me. Iman can be affected if I'm going through a difficulty. Iman can be affected if I'm blessed with a blessing. But it should not dictate whether or not I'm doing a good deed. That should not change based upon circumstances. And that's exactly what the Prophet is being told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Makkah, he's being told that you're being taunted. But continue worshipping Allah and don't allow your chest, even though we know that it's happening, don't allow that to stop you from worshipping. So this tells us that we can feel bad, we can feel low, we can feel, we can get affected by the things that people say in the way that they stare at us, but it cannot stop us from continuing 
the, 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 the purpose of our existence, which is to, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in, in the next surah, in Surah Al-Nahr, Allah ends it off with a journey, with a, with a, with a, with a journey in Medina in the battle of Uhud, that even though this is a very difficult day in your life, continue to have patience and don't allow your chest to make you, to bring anxiety to you, in your heart to bring anxiety to you, but rather allow yourself to work through this. And how do you work through this? By being with those that are individuals of, of ihsan and excellence and those that have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they will have a positive effect on you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to bring this into our life and be people that are, that, that the effect of people's words and taunts, if they reach our heart, it does not reach, it does not affect our amal. And wa'abud rabbaka hatta yatiyakil yaqeen becomes something that we can live by, that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till our last breath, until Yaqeen comes to us, meaning until we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. May Allah bless you all. Jazakallah khair for joining again. Um, I try to keep it short today because we do have... Um, Salaam wa ta'ala wa sister. MashaAllah. The Baradiya family is on. May Allah bless you. I see you guys every day. Um, alhamdulillah. And anyone that, you know, and please feel free to comment, inshallah, so I can reply to your salam. Um, today we actually have our sisters only webinar at 3 o'clock. So I encourage everyone to go there. We have Sister Lubna Mullah. Um, I can share it with you as well, just in case if you don't have it. Um, we have Sister Lubna Mullah, we have Dr. Haifa Yunus, um, some 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 great speakers that are joining us today for this. This is a two-hour session. It's not too long, and it's not too um, too heavy. Just something small and simple. And we did it only for sisters because a lot of sisters had contacted us and they asked, you know, can we do something? for sisters and uh, we thought it was a great idea, so inshallah, please do join that as well. Uh, and hopefully, I won't be there, but the sisters that are hosting it, they'll see you there, inshallah. Zakalakhir, Zakalakhir, sister Marina. Well, I bless you. Zakalakhir for coming on every day, uh, you and your family. And, uh, and give us all consistency. Allahi barik fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.